Okay, so thank you all for joining me today and for watching this recorded presentation. I know that we are all trying to figure out virtual conferences this year. And so if you're watching this, great, I'm glad someone is. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, evaluating public interpretation of the Storm Prediction Center convective outlook. And I want to acknowledge my collaborators, Joe Ripperger, Sean Ernst, and many others at the OU Center for Risk and Crisis Management and at the Cooperative Institute for Mesoscale Meteorological Studies. So first, I wanted to start off with the history of the SPC categories, just so that we all have a little bit of context. They started being regularly issued in 1973, and then the categories slight, moderate and high risk started being issued in 1974. Then in 2003, they added the underlying probabilities that determined the categorical outlook. And then the most recent change was in 2014, when the categories marginal and enhanced were added on either side of the slight category. So marginal was added on the lower end uh, to provide more granularity. And then enhanced was added between slight and moderate. And it was actually added originally as the term enhanced slight, but then it was shortened due to technological constraints to just enhanced. So we've been hearing recently that a few studies have documented challenges with interpreting the convective outlook, particularly the categorical scale. So ordering of the category names has been shown to be quite challenging, for example, with Sean Ernst's master's work, um, and then even some senior capstone projects. Uh, most often we find that marginal and slight uh, have been switched, as well as the enhanced and moderate categories. And then Castle Williams in his dissertation work has shown that people do recognize inconsistencies in these displays. So say if the SPC has uh, their scale and then a broadcast meteorologist is using a slightly different scale to try to improve interpretation for their audience, uh, Castle has shown that people do recognize those inconsistencies and that they tend to trust or use the display with the highest risk category. So this work is going to try to address some possible solutions for this misinterpretation or misordering, particularly of the words, uh, the categorical scale. So the data for uh, this work comes from the Severe Weather and Society Survey. Just a little bit of background on that. It is an annual survey of the US public and it, it systematically measures tornado warning reception, uh, comprehension and response uh, to tornado warnings and severe weather forecasts. And then we generally include two types of questions. The first is repeat questions that measure these core concepts. And then the second, which is what we're going to be using for this work, are actually new questions that measure emerging topics or interests from the research team or challenges. And a cool example of that is actually uh, in the 2020 survey, we included questions about COVID-19 and how that might impact people's risk perception or response to severe weather situations. The first survey was fielded in 2017 with 2000 adults uh, sample being representative of the US adult population and then we've had a sample of 3000 adults since then. So in this experiment, uh, what we do is we are actually trying to understand how using information that the SPC already provides in their convective outlook forecasts uh, can change the interpretation of that forecast information. So what we do is we first assign randomly a forecast phrase to each respondent, and then we ask them to rate their concern and their likelihood of responding on a 0 to 100 scale. So we give them a forecast phrase and then ask them two questions. Please rate your concern after getting this forecast and your likelihood to respond. Um, and again, these forecast phrases contain information that SPC already provides. So there's five different uh, groups here. The first being category only, so just the slight enhanced and moderate phrasing. Then we look at levels, level two, three, and four out of five. Then we look at the percent only, uh, so 5%, 15%, and 30% chance, which are the underlying tornado probabilities for those categorical levels. And then we combine them. So we say, okay, a slight risk level two of five in parentheses, or a slight risk 5% chance. So we combine category and level and category and percent. 
Now, each one of our respondents was assigned only one of these phrases and asked to rate it things only once because we didn't want them anchoring to previous responses, you know, thinking, well, I said 20 out of 100 for this. So now I got to say higher because it seems higher. So we only showed them one to avoid this. And because of that, uh, we are focusing only on the slight enhanced and moderate. We took off marginal and high. Uh, first, because at least high risk seems to be well understood. And if we added in too many different stratifications, then there would be so few respondents in each group. So we'd only have like 20 in the slight risk group that we couldn't really draw uh, relevant conclusions. So here's the phrase that we showed our respondents. Forecasters often use a combination of phrases, scales, and probabilities. We want, you to, we want to know how you interpret these forecasts. So to begin, imagine that it is Saturday morning at 8 a.m. and you get a tornado forecast indicating that there is a random phrase for tornadoes at your location that evening. That random phrase is uh, say there is a slight risk. There is a moderate risk level four or five, et cetera. Then we say on a scale from zero to 100, not at all concerned to extremely concerned. How concerned are you if you would get this forecast? And then same thing for not at all likely to extremely likely, likely how likely are you to change your plans? So now what I'm showing you on the x-axis is that zero to 100 scale. And then I have this broken down by just category, just level and just probability. And then I have the median ratings shown as the dot, and then the uh, error bars are the interquartile range. So they are medians and IQRs, not means and standard errors. Just wanted to make sure that was clear. And what we see is that when you're looking at just the categorical phrases, uh, the slight risk, the median was median concern rating was 50 out of 100. And that's actually the same uh, concern, median concern rating for moderate risk. So slight and moderate risk have a median concern rating of 50 out of 100. The enhanced risk actually has a higher median concern rating. So this is a little bit concerning uh, because once again, we are seeing this misordering of the enhanced and moderate categories. Um, and especially because moderate might be the highest category that a lot of areas ever see, this is quite concerning. Then if you look at the level ratings, we actually do see a correct ordering here. So from going from level two to three to four, we see an increase in the median uh, concern rating from about 50 to about 80 or so out of 100. Same thing with the percentages. So from five to 15 to 30% chance, we see an increase in the concern ratings, the median concern rating um, from just below 25 to 50 out of 100. Now, we see a correct ordering similarly to the levels, but you will note that the um, magnitude of the con median concern ratings is lower for the percentages than for the levels. So that's just important to keep in mind. What's really interesting is when you combine this information, what we see is very similar to when you just provide the category. So for the category and level combination, we see a very similar median response ratings, uh, 50 out of 100 for slight, 75 out of 100 for enhanced, and then closer to 50 again for uh, moderate. Similar thing for category and percent, but again, the magnitude of these median concern ratings are lower than when you combine it with the level. What's important here is that people seem to be anchoring to the words. Now, whether that's because we put the words first and then we put the numeric information in the, pers uh, in the parentheses, or whether that's just because people are anchoring to the words, uh, we can't necessarily know that, but it's important to know that people are anchoring to the words in this uh, situation. So while it might be tempting to combine the category with the numeric information to try to improve interpretation, at least in these results, we're seeing that that actually doesn't have much of an effect. Very similar thing for response ratings. Again, enhanced risk has a higher uh, response rating than moderate risk. So people are saying they are more likely to respond when they get an enhanced risk than when they get a moderate risk forecast. That's concerning. As uh, similar patterns for the level and the probability 
uh, forecasts. Again, uh, correct order or increasing likelihood of response ratings when you increase levels and increase percentages. However, the levels, once again, overall have a higher likelihood of responding than the uh, percentages do. And again, when you combine this information, so you have a category label with a level, uh, again, we see that people are generally anchoring to those categorical labels. So again, enhanced level three of five has a higher likelihood of responding than moderate level four of five. When you look at the probability uh, labels combined with the category labels, <clears throat> we do see that in this case, the enha enhanced risk 15% actually has an equal uh, median re response rating as the moderate risk 30% chance. So right there, we do have uh, similar medians for those two forecast phrases. So currently, what I've just shown you, uh, we don't show any graphics with that experiment. So we're simply showing them words. Now we know that uh, forecast graphics are often displayed with the SPC uh, forecast text. So we wanted to see if including graphics changed people's interpretations at all. So for this experiment, we set on a scale from zero to 100, where zero means no risk and 100 means extreme risk. How much risk does this forecast suggest for people in the Southern Plains? So note that we are not asking about concern or likelihood of response anymore. We're now asking to rate, asking respondents to rate risk. On the left, we show uh, one third of our respondents just text, and this is the text they saw, moderate risk of severe thunderstorms and tornadoes across portions of the Southern Plains. Then uh, in the middle, we have the outlook shown with that text. And then on the right, we also have the public severe weather outlook shown with the text. And what we found is that uh, graphics actually do help people orient their risk ratings a little bit. So when you show them just the text only for a moderate risk, we see a median uh, risk rating of 50 out of 100. But then when you show them the graphics, no matter if it's a public severe weather outlook or the regular outlook, we do see those median risk ratings increase to about 60 out of 100 or so. So maybe that's not quite the amount of increase we'd like to see, but we are seeing that an increase from text to text with graphic does occur. So what does all of this mean? Uh, well, the current categorical scale is often misunderstood by the general public. We do see that. We see that the moderate category is particularly problematic. The moderate and enhanced levels are often uh, flip-flopped in the order. But the use of levels and underlying probabilities can lead to more consistent concern and response ratings. Overall, the levels tend to have a higher rating than the percentages, but they are generally ordered correctly. Now, people tend to anchor to the categories. When you're combining information, categories with numeric information, uh, the ratings become less consistent. People like to look at the categories first and use that um, as their rating, uh, these concern and response ratings. Um, however, graphics do seem to help, and they help orient risk uh, perceptions, particularly when people can see the graphic with the bullseye on it. And with that, uh, I will be done here, but please note that if you are unable to come to the live session that you can certainly find me on Twitter or over email and I'm happy to discuss this work um, and anything else you want to ask. So thank you.